Hey guys, what's up? This is Matthew Davis Media once again, and uh, welcome back to another video game review. This time it is going to be on Cadence of Hyrule. Now, Cadence of Hyrule is a crossover between an indie game called uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, and of course, because Hyrule's in the title, The Legend of Zelda series. And uh, because it's a crossover between that game and The Legend of Zelda series, you know I just had to play it because I'm a big Legend of Zelda fan. I have been for three years. I know it doesn't seem like I know that much about Zelda, but trust me, I do. And uh, knowing that this game was coming out, and uh, the fact that we're getting Link's Awakening, a remake for Nintendo Switch in September, and, believe it or not, a sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, it's... <laughs> Uh, I don't think Nintendo's gonna slow down with Zelda anytime soon, and honestly, I don't care because, hey, I'm a big fan of the series. I have, like, four more Zelda shirts, and Zelda plushies, and Zelda posters. Yeah, I'm, you can just call me a Legend of Zelda fanboy. Now, anyways, in this game, uh, Cadence uh, from Crypt of the Necrodancer is, uh, gets transported to Hyrule, and in order to get back, uh, she, along with Link and Zelda, have to find these instruments uh, that this bad guy has uh, kept away somewhere, so you have to go through multiple dungeons in order to get those instruments so you can t take them down so Cadence can get home. And uh, I did not really know what to expect. I thought this was just going to be a Zelda game with a new character in it. I didn't even know what Crypt that the Necrodancer was. I thought, I thought it was just, I thought Cadence was just some, you know, girl that they just put in the game. But uh, no, it's actually a crossover between uh, another game. And uh, after playing the game, maybe I might check it out. Although I heard it's supposed to be kind of difficult. It's supposed to be in the same perspective as this, but you know. What's really different about this, and I was not expecting this at all, is that you have to fight during the rhythm of the music. Like, you have to, like, you, in order for you to defeat uh, certain villains, like, you have to, like, uh, the, the beat goes on, like, and uh, you have to jump from square to square to square to fight bad guys, and uh, if you do it at the right moment, then it's most likely you're going to get a right, um, you're going to get a hit on him. And uh, all the creatures have their own life bars, and uh, all the creatures, uh, um, of course there's multiple creatures, like uh, you got your typical Zelda creatures, like you got the knights, you got the like likes, although um, you got like those slime things that each have their uh, different element, and uh, basically it's like, it's like Crypt of the Necrodancer, and mostly a Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, I felt like I was playing like a remake to Link to the Past, like a cool remix version of Link to the Past, like, seriously, one of my biggest praises is, uh, the way they use the music, like, they do, like, remixes of certain music, like, uh, when, uh, when I heard the Gerudo Valley music, it sounded a lot, like, or at least the beginning, it sounded like, you know, that, that song that they used for, uh, Thor and Ragnarok, you know, you know the one that goes like, ah, but it starts off like dun, 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 like uh, it's just <laughs> it just felt so awesome and that's honestly one of my favorite songs in the Zelda series of all time so uh that's basically the biggest thing is the music like you have to you have to get the rhythm right so you can go from um area to area if uh, you don't get it right then uh you're uh not going to move on but uh, that's that's one thing that I was really surprised with, and uh, it get, it took me quite a bit of time to get used to. Like as soon as I started playing it, I was like, "What's going on? What am I doing?" Like I got so frustrated that it literally took me a week later before I got up and tried playing the game again. Uh, this time with trying to get everything right, uh, getting better with the combat and stuff. But uh, and you know, a week later, I managed to beat the game in just two days. Huh. <sighs> But, you know, it is a short game, just like most indie games. Uh, but, uh, you know, this was surprisingly a really fun ride. I had an awesome time with this game. Now, uh, anyways, uh, the retro-style graphics looked absolutely crisp and spectacular. It felt like I was I was playing, like, a remaster of, uh, of A Link to the Past, except with music and stuff. Now, uh, what's really cool about this game is you can use co-op. And uh, you can you can use another player. I think it there's only three main playable characters that you get to unlock uh, during uh, your playthrough and stuff. Like you like you see Zelda, then you see Cadence and stuff like that. And uh, 
once you do uh, get them, then I think you can start co-op. But there is an option to just do completely co-op and no single player option. Um, also, you can make the game harder because there is a there is a perma depth difficulty, and uh, I haven't tried that out. But uh, you know, I'm not really big with perma depth except for maybe like Fire Emblem Awakening. But yeah, it's kind of like that. So you got your, you basically have just like four dungeons in the game total, but uh, you know, five if you include, you know, the final counter with Ganon. Ganon is in the game. If I have to point out negatives, I can say that the boss battles are pretty easy, even he, even easier than the palaces themselves. Like, I beat this one boss, like the first boss, in like less than a minute because. Uh, also, that's another thing. The bosses, they're really easy to learn. You know, it's easy to learn their pattern, probably because they're bigger bosses and stuff. But each enemy has their own pattern, like, uh, you can get behind them and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. And, uh, I wouldn't say this is a flat-out rhythm-based game, like Guitar Hero or Dance Central or Just Dance. No. It's nothing like that. In fact, you can, you could remove the you know, rhythm difficulty or, you know, the rhythm thing altogether and just play like a regular Zelda game except you have to jump from square to square to square in order to, uh, you know, defeat the bad guy. Uh, but overall, guys, I had a great time with Cadence of Hyrule. It was fun. It was well-paced. You know, the music, that's what had me... That, that's what had me keep going. Also, I love how, you know, this isn't a game that... Uh, doesn't tell you where to go it does tell you where to go and uh, later down the line it, it, it will tell you um what heart pieces are still missing where they're located and special chests and stuff like that oh yeah also another thing i almost forgot to mention is that um when you get specific items you lose them if you die but there are a lot of items in the game that you actually if you get them like the boomerang the hook shot and the upgrades and when you get swords, you keep them. If you die, uh, you keep them. There's multiple swords that you can upgrade down the line, and they don't break either, except for a couple that were made of glass. But, you know, it's glass, so, yeah. It's not like Breath of the Wild where, you know, weapons will always break. No, you'll have, always have them with them. And uh, that is very helpful, actually. You will lose your rupees if you die, but that's okay because it's really easy to get them back. You just have to defeat the enemy. Well, you know how it is. Uh, I think I got everything I wanted to talk about of this game, so I'm just going to end it off here. Cadence of Hyrule was a blast, guys. If you're a fan of the Legend of Zelda series, you're definitely going to enjoy this. Uh, although, if you're not into, like, uh, you know, upbeat, you know, if, you're, if, if the combat doesn't seem like it's uh, good enough for you, then that's okay. Like I said before, we got Link's Awakening coming out in September, so that's going to be really awesome. <sighs> But uh, if you played a Crypt of the Necro Dancer, then I have a feeling that you're gonna love this just as much as that. Would I would I play the game? Maybe one day, maybe one day down the line. But for right now, I'm just gonna stick with this game because hey, Zelda's my thing. <laughs> like I said before, I'm gonna give Cadence of Hyrule a four and a half out of five. What is there more to say? Definitely pick it up. Um, it's only available for download, and because it's a Nintendo game, because Zelda and stuff, then, uh, you know, it's going to be on Nintendo Switch uh, only. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, there's no physical copies, so you're just going to have to download it. But that's okay. I've downloaded so many games that didn't have physical copies, like Hollow Knight, Celeste, although Hollow Knight does have physical copies now, but... Uh, yeah, de definitely download this one if uh, this game sounds interesting to you and if you're a fan of the Legend of Zelda series. Or if you're a fan of Crypt of the Necro Dancer, which I don't think about it. I haven't heard of that game until I've heard it was a cr crossover. Like, the full title is Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necro Dancer meets Legend of Zelda. I think that's how it is, but uh, I don't know. But you know, with Zelda spinoffs like uh, Hyrule Warriors and Link's Crossbow Training, this is definitely the best Zelda spinoff game by far. And no, Smash Brothers does not count at all. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, Spider-Man review will be out soon, as well as Midsommar. And uh, so yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Word out.